Hello, Tenfold. This is Rashida Mabidilala. I'm from Kiala Secondary School in Limpopo. I would like you to help me with this question here. So let's check out what the question says. We are told here that Mr. Brownie compares the results of his matric class of 27 students from the school trial and the final exam. So there's a comparison of two things here. First of all, he wants to compare the trial marks. The trial is the preliminary exam, guys, and the final examination. The box plot is a summary of the exams, which means it's the summary of the examination, whilst the cumulative frequency graph summarizes the results of the final exam. So clearly, this is for the trial exam. We can see there's the box and whisker plot. And then below that, we've got the cumulative frequency curve, which is basically sketched specifically to give us a lot of information about the final exam mark. All right, now let's see what the first question is going to be for us in this case. All right, we are told here that we need to use this OGIV or this cumulative frequency curve and read off the value of the 60th percentile. All right, we want to read off the value of the 60th percentile. Now, this is not complicated. It's pretty straightforward. And if you look there, we just want to know 60% value. The 60th percentile is what you get when you're trying to figure out the 60% of the total number of these students and you try to read the mark off on the exam marks. Right. Let's see what will happen in this case. Right. So we are trying to basically work out what is 60% right, of um, the, this number of learners that we've got. Remember, we've got 27 students in total. So we are basically looking for 60 over 100 multiplied by 27 divided by 1. Let's see what number we are going to get here if we do that. Right. So 60% is simply 60 all over 100 refiller. And then you need to multiply that by this 27 that we have here because we have a total of 27 students in total. And then this gives us a value of 16.2. Right. So now if you go back to your cumulative frequency curve, we are going to look for that 16.2 on the y-axis. In this case, the cumulative frequency column. 16.2 is somewhere there. This is where 16.2 might be lying because you can clearly see there we're going up in multiples of 5. All right. So what you do here is you go to the graph. You go to the graph straight. Your graph paper is much more accurate than what I'm currently dealing with here. So you're going to get a much, much better um, uh, accurate result than the one that I might get here in this case. So you just go straight to the graph and then you try to go to the x-axis and see what is the percentage value you're going to read there. And if I had to uh, make a wild guess, I would say this is somewhere around 70, maybe 72 percent. This is basically the answer to this particular question. So, so the solution to this very easy question, use the or give and read off the value of the 60th percentile, the 60th percentile is happening at 16.2. That's where we found the value of that on the y-axis. You go to the graph and then you read off on the x-axis the corresponding percentage for that particular uh, percentile. Moving uh, on to the next question, it's saying to us that in which interval is the frequency the highest? In which interval is the frequency the highest? Very interesting indeed. We need to actually uh, look at that. Now, this is what you guys need to understand about uh, the cumulative frequency curve. What happens is the frequency gets added. When I have a particular value of the frequency, I'm going to add the next value of the frequency for the next class. And then for the next class, I keep adding and then adding and then adding, compiling on top of those frequencies to keep on getting my numbers until we get to a value of 27 learners in total. So between every two points on your cumulative frequency curve, you can be able to read off the amount of the frequency that was added from the previous class. So if a particular class is at 5 and I have to add a frequency of 3, then it means the next dot or the next point will simply be at 5 plus 3, which is going to be 8. So the spacing going vertical upwards tells you the amount of the frequency that was added. Now, if this question says in which interval is the frequency the highest, which means we are looking for the biggest shift, the biggest horizontal shift moving from a particular dot going up. Now we need to go back and look at our graph so that we can see between which two dots 
do you see the space being the largest? Between which two dots do you see the space being the largest? If you clearly look at the first dot here, the first dot and the second dot there, the shift moving upwards is not that much. It's a very small shift moving straight up right there. All right. And then if you go and check between the second dot and the third dot, look at the spacing between them. That's the amount of frequency that was added from uh, the previous class on the new class to get to the next one. So I don't know about you, but clearly you can see that the big biggest horizontal shift is happening from this one here, from this particular dot all the way to that other dot. Let me change color there so that you can see what I'm actually talking about. From this level to that level, the shift there, that is where the biggest shift is actually occurring in this particular graph. All right, so now we want to know this one corresponds to what x value on the x-axis. We want to know the actual interval. That's basically what we are interested in here because we added a particular value of the frequency to move from this dot to the next dot, which is what we normally use when we are sketching our cumulative frequency curve. So clearly, when you look at what we have there, moving straight up, this class here going straight down, right? The value there is somewhere around 65 right this is basically what this is and the last dot there if you go straight to it it will be somewhere there at 75 sorry for that guys it's between 65 and 75 if i remove this yes it's between 65 and 75 you can clearly see that between 75 and 65 that is a class interval for which the greatest shift in the frequencies is basically observed so the answer there is going to be the values between 65 percent and 75%, that is where the frequency is the highest. And that is what we call um, the modal uh, class. This class is the modal class. Right, moving on to the last part of our question. We are now required to draw a box and whisker plot for the final um, examination and indicate on the diagram the values of the five number summary. Now remember, you can't draw the box and whisker plot without the five number summary. You need the minimum, you need the lower quartile, you need the, um, uh, the median. Right, yes, you need the median as well. Right, uh, you need the median and you need the upper quartile, and then you also need the maximum number. When you have all these numbers, they will help you to be able to build your five number summary that you can use to draw a box and whisker plot. All right, so now let's go back and check what exactly are these values. What's the minimum and what is the maximum? They're not at all complicated to see. Let's see what the story is going to be if you go back and you look on the graph. I'm going to need to remove this so that our graph paper is a little bit cleaner so that you guys can be able to figure out what the story is here now clearly the minimum number here is going to definitely be somewhere here that's basically where you always read off your values and i'm gonna make an argument and say it is 45 and then the highest value there is the one that is right there and it's simply going to be at the value of 95 remember your graph paper is much more accurate than what i'm dealing with here so you can read off much more better uh, accurate numbers All right now if i want to find the um, quartiles if i want to find the quartiles now the median and the um, upper quartile as well as the lower quartile i'm going to need to use my graph here and ask it uh, my calculator to help me and say i'm trying to figure out the first quartile here where is the first quartile of this number? You always add the number of values that you're actually adding plus one. This is what you can actually do to try and find where the first quartile can be read off. You get a value of seven. So we need to come and read off our lower quartile at the cumulative frequency value of exactly seven. So seven is somewhere there. Right, that's where, okay, that's, yes, that's seven somewhere there. Right, so you go straight to the graph. When you get to the graph, you try and read off what percentage corresponds to this. And I can clearly see there the percentage value that I'm getting is 62%. Uh, right, so then I go back to the graph and say, okay, now I'm interested in finding the, mid the middle number now, the second quarter, which is basically halfway through. It's at 14. Right, so let's go and find 14. 14 is somewhere there. Go straight to your graph. You remember that you need to always read off your values from the x-axis. And if you go straight down, it is somewhere there, just over 70. I can actually say it's about maybe 73% is also acceptable. We do allow you an error value of around plus minus the correct value by a value of 2. 
Great. And then if I go to the last one, which is going to be the third quarter, let's just see what will happen. So third quarter is going to be at a value of 21. We need to read, read it off from a cumulative frequency value of 21. So let's go and find where 21 is. This is where 21 is. This is a nice question that helps you to understand how do you get your five number summary from your cumulative frequency graph, guys. So once I'm here, which is where 21 is, I'm simply going to go straight down, straight down, straight down and see. And in this case, I'm actually getting maybe 80. I'll just say that value is going to be 81%. So my five number summary is the minimum number will just simply be 45, right? 45%. The lower quartile will just simply be 62%. The median or the middle number will just simply be 75%. The upper quartile will just simply be um, 81 percent and the maximum number we are getting here is 95 percent so this is basically what you can use to draw your box and whisker plot if you do exactly what we need to do uh, it has to be accurate and drawn to scale so let's again remove this information so that we can have enough space for this final answer here guys right so let's just see you need it to be on the x-axis they will always provide you with a graph paper and then you have your values here um, 45, uh, 55, uh, 65, 75, 85, and 95, and so on and so on. So you'll get a much nicer graph paper. I'm pressed for time in this case. And then you can be able to actually use that particular graph paper to plot your points. The maximum number is at 95. The minimum number is at 45. Uh, my quartiles is 62 and 75. 62 is somewhere here 75 is somewhere it's not 75 it's 73 yes we did say it's going to be 73 guys yes right so 73 will be somewhere here and the um, upper quartile is at 81 81 is just somewhere about there so you just join those three points you join them to these two dots then you've got your box and your whisker plot